Joining us again this morning, morning. The Russians said again this morning that they're continuing to pull back troops from the border. Yesterday, the president said he was skeptical about that. Are you seeing any evidence that this is being done in a real and significant way? We're not. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a difference between Russia says and, and what it does. Uh, and what we're seeing is no. Um... And then there's also a difference between what we say Russia is saying and doing and what Russia is actually doing. Which is why maybe we should like, I don't know, treat another foreign country like an independent foreign nation as an independent foreign nation rather than a, uh, you know, lifeless uh, husk out there, like an alien figure out there that we can just like ascribe values and motivations to regularly in an effort to do warmongering propaganda. But hey, we've been wrong this entire time. My organization as the secretary of state has been wrong the entire time so far. But it doesn't matter because even if we were wrong, we were actually wrong deliberately so we could stop Russia from being uh, violent. OK, and they were going to and then they stopped their blood. Russia is a, a led by a crazy, bloodthirsty maniac who will not put who will not call into consideration his material conditions before waging all out war. And he's going to do World War Three, but also. He stopped when we scared him. We didn't do anything extra. War is inevitable, but also simultaneously that inevitable war has been stopped by us. And maybe war was never inevitable. Maybe you think war was inevitable because you live here and all you see are mainstream media sources that are greedy as f that get directly funded by the military industrial complex that operate as a mouthpiece for the state department maybe that's the reason why you thought war was inevitable because hey kind of like that age-old story of the guy selling uh anti-elephant spray in town you're living in iowa and some guy is selling you spray to put on your house it's anti-elephant spray so the elephants don't attack your house you say wait a minute i'm in iowa why do i need anti-elephant spray and he says do you see any elephants around that must mean the spray is working you motherfuckers are buying the elephant spray because you think that there is an elephant attack that's imminent, but you live in Iowa. Meaningful pullback. On the contrary, we continue to see forces, especially forces that would be in the vanguard of any uh, renewed aggression against Ukraine, continuing uh, to, uh, to be at the border, uh, to mass at the border. We also heard from the Kremlin spokesman this morning, Dmitry Peskov, saying that there still is a possibility uh, that diplomacy can work, but that Russia is getting pretty tired of these threats and warnings from the president. <laughs> well, the, the threats are coming in the other direction. They're coming from Russia, unprovoked, massing forces on Ukraine's borders. Uh, but there's, there always has to be an opening for diplomacy. And in fact, that's, uh, that's my job. So we'll pursue that. And as the president said yesterday, we're prepared either way. We're prepared if Russia's ready to actually engage in meaningful diplomacy that would strengthen everyone's security in Europe. We're also prepared if they choose to renew aggression against Ukraine. Um, the, the choice is really President Putin's. <laughs> Explain the circus and local zoos, brainiac. Well, there's are, there are elephants and zoos that's on. Typical lefty always spreading misinformation. That's kind of f Elephant attacks are really common, actually, as a matter of fact. Here, the American government tells me elephant attacks are happening all around. Uh, even if I haven't seen a singular elephant attack happen in Iowa, it does not matter, actually. Hey, look at this video of an elephant attack that famously happened in uh, some, some, you know, uh, the African village. Uh, that's right. You, you stupid Western lefty. You're so wrong. You're so wrong about elephant attacks. You, you know, your intelligence has, has suggested that the invasion could actually come today. Does that still feel possible? We said that we were in a window uh, of time at which the invasion could come at any time. Uh, President Putin's put in place the capacity to act on very short notice. Uh, he can pull the trigger. He could pull it today. He could pull it tomorrow. He could pull it next week. The forces are there if he wants to renew aggression against Ukraine. What's the basis for a diplomatic solution right now? Look, George, we shared ideas with, uh, with Russia se several weeks ago uh, about ways on a reciprocal basis, with each side taking steps, we could actually improve security throughout Europe. We did that in close coordination with our European partners and allies. We're waiting for a response from Russia. I spoke to Foreign Minister Lavrov yesterday. He said a response was forthcoming in the next, uh, the next few days. I just came back from watching the leftists defend NATO and he said, why do leftists crumble in foreign policy issues? That's such a straight, like, they're not leftists, dude. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not a gatekeeper, but, like, I guess this is one area where it's, like, I am being kind of gatekeeping and it's annoying, but, like, how are you a fucking leftist? And then you routinely talk about domestic issues and you talk about the fucking military, you talk about American imperialism, you talk about how, how devastating it has been for so many countries all around the planet. 
Latin American countries, so many, you know, post-World War II uh, Western countries and Eastern countries have, have suffered as a consequence of the Cold War, what America has done throughout the Cold War, all this shit. And then you say ACAB, you talk about policing as an institution and how morally bankrupt it is, especially under like a bourgeois, especially under a, a, a bourgeois organization of the economy. And then you can literally look to NATO, the world's policing system. You look to NATO, which is an extension, an organization dedicated specifically to destroying communism all around the world an ideological warfare against communism all around the world and you say no that's actually good it's defensive even though it's not defensive it is offensive it has always been offensive and it will continue to be offensive like that is like why are you a leftist then it's just like you're aesthetically a leftist i guess like it's it's wild that's like i mean that's like basic socialist principles is basic anti-imperialist principles uh is to say like hey listen like i don't think america should be the fucking world police you can't fucking turn around and be like no i think america should be the world police actually it's fucking dope i think my analysis on this is also relatively uh, uh, more reasonable. I'm not like a, a major advocate for, you know, anyone who's America's enemy that is automatically good. Like, they're not. They're not good. They're fucking countries. That's what hegemonic powers do. They do hegemonic power shit. And it's awful, and it's brutal, and it sucks, and it's morally bankrupt. Okay? Straight up. It's the truth. But I also do think in a balance. I believe in a balance. And I feel like America has been the world police for far too fucking long, and everything that it has done in that effort to maintain its hegemonic power and its status as the world police has been brutal and violent and awful. And I think that there needs to be a little bit better of a balance struck. Okay. And if that means like more regional sovereignty for regional leaders, then so be it. But holy fuck, dude, it is completely, completely unacceptable. Yet you again, confuse American world policing and imperialism with the purpose of NATO ensuring European peace is NATO was explain to me how NATO was ensuring European peace when they were bombing Libya. Is that what they were doing? Explain how, explain how uh, uh, NATO was uh, doing, ensuring European peace when they were, uh, when they were, were uh, facilitating the invasion of Afghanistan. Can you explain to me what, what, how that worked? Was it, were, they, were they doing healing bullets? Or when they like fucking, when they give lethal aid to Ukraine? Wait, what? And it was backed by Russia. Dude, you are a fucking psycho, dude. You are completely a fucking psycho. It, like, what? Afghanistan was backed by Russia? Like, the, the new Afghan invasion? Like, the, the one that was, like, 20 years ago? What? That's gotta be bait, right? An 18-month subscriber can't be this fucking stupid, I hope. Libya. Russia made NATO bomb Libya. Is, is, the, is the big bad Russians in the room with us right now? I hope it comes. Uh, we'll take a hard look at it, and then we'll see where we, where we go from there. But Lethal aid to Ukraine makes sense. It makes a Russian invasion more costly and thus unlikely. Dude, that is so fucking stupid. A Russian invasion into Ukraine is incredibly costly and unlikely, even without the $500 uh, billion dollars of fucking support that we're pumping into the country in the form of lethal aid. You're out of your mind. Russia cannot handle an insurgent war in an urban landscape Especially when it's in its own fucking backyard. You are insane. We remain committed to seeing if we can find a diplomatic resolution. It's the right thing to do. It's the responsible thing to do. It would avert uh, a war. But again, uh, it really is President Putin's choice to make. And again, what we're seeing on the border remains deeply, deeply concerning. It appears from some of the comments from American officials over the last several days that you're concerned that President Zelensky of the Ukraine is not taking this threat seriously enough. Is that true? Oh, no. I think President Zelensky is taking it very seriously. He's trying to, to maintain calm. He doesn't want his people to panic. That's, uh, that's the right thing to do. But I think the Ukrainians are taking it very, very seriously. And of course, if there is uh, renewed aggression by, uh, by Russia, the consequences would be terrible. And uh, first and foremost, terrible for the Ukrainian people. So he recognizes that. We have been supporting Ukraine. We provided more defensive assistance to Ukraine last year than we did in any previous year. Just the other Dude, they aren't going to carpet bomb Ukraine. Let's not exaggerate. Wait, I never said that they were going to carpet bomb Ukraine. That would be fucking psychotic, okay? If there is a, if there is a, a fucking function that has historically carpet bombed areas, that's not going to be the Russian forces. It's going to be fucking, you know, American imperialist forces. If we're, if we're talking about a fucking in, a, a country that is more likely to carpet bomb civilian territory... It's not Russia, okay? It's America, motherfucker. We've, it's like whenever people say, you know what's really funny about that? 
People always say like, oh, this country can't have nukes. That country can't have nukes. They will be irresponsible with it. There's only one fucking country on the planet that's used them though, dude. What are you talking about? We did it. We used them. And then we turn around and we're like, what if someone else uses them, dude? Uh, head of Zelensky, servant of the People's Party in Parliament, claims Western media hysteria is now costing the country 2 to $3 billion every month. Call CNN, Bloomberg, and Wall Street Journal coverage worse than Skabiva and Solovyov, no, Solovyov, top Russian state propagandists. The reason why they're saying this is because all of this non-fucking-stop, uh, like, Russia is going to invade, Russia is going to invade, Russia is going to invade arguments and, and uh, agitations have obviously... Uh, uh, it caused fear, it struck fear in the heart of uh, uh, people that wanted to go to Ukraine for tourism. Okay, people that have business with Ukrainian companies. It has led to foreign investment pulling out of Ukraine. How do people explain if invasion is imminent? Why? Why is the Ukrainian president saying shit like this? The Ukrainian president has been saying shit like this for the past couple of months. You just don't fucking hear it. You don't see it in the news because it goes against the overarching narrative that like, it's happening. You know, it's happening. It's happening. You, th this, it goes against the narrative that it, this is happening. Putin has a big weekend plan. This person like literally writes, this person writes, uh, I mean, this person is a think tank uh, operative. Okay. Like she's writing foreign policy for the American government. And this is what she said. Putin has a big weekend plan in Ukraine. He's going to cut power and heat, knock out Ukrainian Navy and Air Force, kill general staff, <laughs> and hit them with a cyber attack. She's at the Atlantic Council, dude. Then install pro-Russian president, and three, resort to full-scale military invasion if Ukraine doesn't give in. What happened, dude? What happened? Bro, you are so wrong. Everyone's going to Ukraine. I just saw the U.S. send their army near there, full cap. I don't understand what you're trying to say. <laughs> you're so wrong, man. Everyone's going to Ukraine. I just saw the U.S. send their army near there, full cap. Yeah, dude, that's true. Straight up. She's out here fucking writing Wattpad fan fictions uh, for uh, a Russian invasion that is, like, imminent. And it has not happened yet. But, you know, the, the impact of it is still consequential. She's just claiming the date is... Oh, Alan, thanks for the love, but I'm not deleting it. We don't live in Old Testament times. No one is going to cut off my hand for getting the date wrong. Oh, she doubled down on it. Deputy Director of AC Eurasia, uh, the uh, Atlantic Council, Eurasia and Atlantic Council, is, uh, is, is saying, you know, she got the date wrong. This is literally Elon Musk, dude. I'm not deleting it. It's going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And it will likely not happen. And if it doesn't happen, then guess what? It's actually not happening because we successfully thwarted an attack. The other day, uh, we, uh, we put out a $1 billion loan guarantee to help bolster their economy. Other countries are doing the same. We're there to support uh, Ukraine. Her most recent thing is funny as fuck. She's not saying it was Putin's master plan. We've been so focused on Russian troops and tanks that we missed Moscow's strategy. Strangle Ukraine's economy and sap the resolve of its people. Dude, what the fuck? Yo, this level, this level of argumentation would not work in a fucking gray name Twitch chat, dude. Like, this level of goalpost, motorized goalpost moving would not work in a fucking Twitch chatter trying to argue with me. I would have fucking yelled at them a million times or I would have banned them already. You can't ever lose if you constantly change the fucking main dynamic. If you constantly change the argument, you could never lose. You're never going to lose the argument. Let's finish blinking, though, and I'm going to go pee while this plays. We're there to help it defend itself if there's Russian aggression. But the president ruled out American troops. Can the Ukrainians handle the Russians on their own? The Ukrainians have real capacity, uh, aided by many countries, including uh, the United States. I think they'd make life very difficult for the Russians if, the, if they went in. But again, the, this, the, by far, the more responsible course is to avoid conflict in the first place, which is why we're continuing to do everything we can uh, to see if there's a diplomatic resolution. At the same time, making it very clear to Russia that it will face massive consequences for renewed aggression, not only in terms of uh, continued support for Ukraine's defense, not only in terms of bolstering NATO itself, which is exactly what President Putin says he wants to prevent, but also in terms of very serious economic and financial um, sanctions. But the, the president of Ukraine also said that perhaps this idea of joining NATO is something, he called it a dream. 
I think was the word uh, that he used. Maybe that's that's the, the likely outcome of this, that it's something for the far, far, far distant future. Is that accurate? Well, th the main point is that that should be up to the people of Ukraine uh, and its elected government. If they want to seek to join NATO, again, NATO has an open door policy. It's in its founding documents. That principle is sacrosanct. Uh, and so it really is up to them. And of course, it's up to the alliance itself in terms of admitting new members if they meet the requirements. I think President Biden and, and others have said that's not happening tomorrow. But the principle that if uh, Ukraine seeks admission to NATO, uh, it needs to be uh, considered and the alliance will make that decision. Uh, that remains uh, uh, front and center. And it's not a principle we're going back on. Final quick question. Is the threat today greater than it was yesterday? You know, from day to day, George, you can't say it's, it's uh, higher or lower. It's there. It's there. It's real. We haven't seen a pullback. We'd like to see one. If we see one, we would welcome it. We're prepared for diplomacy. We're prepared for aggression. We're prepared either way. Mr. Secretary, thanks as always for your time and your information. Thanks, George. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more. Sorry, I, uh, I, I got a call from the State Department. Uh, I'm wrong, okay?